Today, we're going to talk about compassion that raises the dead. Hello, and welcome to the Midweek Move Podcast Extension of the Healing Places, the podcast where we examine the scriptures line by line, verse by verse, and ask ourselves, what is happening here today, ladies and gentlemen? We have a what in the world passage as we talk about the dead being raised. But I am joined today with our Midweek Move Summer Series, the Weekly Shorts. I'm joined by Sierra Hall. How are you doing, ma'am? Good. How are you? I am so good. I'm excited to have you on here. Uh, as of the recording of this, we're a couple months out, but when this releases, we're actually a month out from an, a big event that you are very pivotal in, and that is uh, Teen Reach Adventure Camp. We had Jaron on a couple of weeks to talk about, it, but if you could just remind the audience, what is track, and uh, that what like what do you do, and why why do you do it even? Yeah, so track is a camp. Um, it stands for Teen Reach Adventure Camp, and it's actually a national organization. But um, we have one here in Shreveport, and um, it's basically a three day camp for teens who either have been in foster care mm-hmm. or um, who are currently in foster care. And basically, we just let them have fun, mm-hmm. and we provide an atmosphere where they feel the love of Jesus, and um, they hear that Jesus loves them and hear that people care about them. And um, Track really believes that three days can make a difference in a teenager's life. Yeah, And um, we've seen that every single year that we've done it. This will be our fourth year. So, um, I mean, me and Jaren were just talking to a church this morning about it. And um, it really is, we say that, like, once they get on the bus the first day, and then when they get on the bus to leave the last day, it's like they're a different kid. Mm. And it's and you can see it on their face that yeah. they're a different kid. But really, it's within the first couple hours. Yeah, yeah. That the, they, they, the walls come down and they know that they're safe and that yeah. they're in a place where people care about them. And so that's what really matters. So good. I, I'll never forget. There was one girl a couple years ago that uh, maybe it was last year, but she got off the bus and we thought she was an adult that just came to help. And we're like, no, that's a child. And, but she just lived this hard life. But by the end of the three days, she looked like a little girl again. Yep. And there was a restored energy to it. And if you guys like to help fund that camp, if you guys like to help support kids who are going to go to it, go to thpstreetport.com, go to giving page and look for track T R A C. And uh, you guys can give to help uh, this amazing ministry that we get to help support at the Healing Place. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about a different kind of compassion. Uh, here in Luke chapter 7, we've been had a really interesting conversation over the last couple of weeks. Uh, we talked about judging people. We talked about um, expecting or examining the fruit, having a life built on the rock of Jesus. And last week, we talked about Jesus having compassion on a Gentile centurion healing a, a young man. And now uh, we have a really fascinating situation. So let's jump into it. Starting in verse 11 of chapter 7, it says this. Now it happened the day after that that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went to, with him with a large crowd. And when he came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, And she was a widow, and a large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and he said to her, Do not weep. So here we have uh, Jesus and his party. They come across a a devastating scene. Like, this is really sad. There's a grieving woman who has no man in her life. Now, you know, here in 2023, like, you don't need no man. I'm sorry, 2024. But (laughs) this is an old school Jewish culture where this is a major deal. She no, Her husband's passed. She, uh, by context of what we're reading, there's no son-in-law, there's no son, there's no way to take care of this older woman anymore. She is desolate. Des- is that the right word? She's alone, basically. She has nothing else. Her life is just destroyed here. And uh, here we see that Jesus has compassion on her in this moment. So my question for you is, while Jesus is the only one who could really say, don't weep and bring the hope in the manner that we're about to see. Um, in what particular way could you or others show compassion to someone uh, in this manner? And I, I'm really excited actually that, that you're here and I'm thinking about it because that's exactly what you do with Trek. But how do you have compassion on people that you go, they're hopeless, like they've lost everything? How do you walk through that? Well, I think that 
the main thing in here is it shows that Jesus cares. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times that's all that people need Mm -hmm. is to know that someone cares about them. Right. Because unfortunately, it's not like that. Yeah. I mean, we hear people say, I don't care. Yeah. All the time. I'm a teacher in high school. (laughs) (laughs) I hear them say, I don't care, all the time. Right. Um, But no matter who we are or where we come from, we all want to be cared about. Yeah. And I think that, you know, it says don't weep. But like in today's terms, that's like, well, don't cry. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus knows what's about to happen. Right. Because he feels this compassion. And I'm sure that he knows that the father wants him to do something about it. And um, I'm actually reminded that I got, I dive deep into a TV show <laughs> and um, it's a really cool show about like people who have been adopted oh, yeah. um, and they go on this like race and they get reunited with their pe- relatives, blood relatives wow. that they've never known. Yeah. And a lot of times they cry so hard whenever they meet them. But recently there was this one girl, and she just, every time she met a member of her family, she was just so happy. Mm -hmm. And whenever one of her family members would cry, she'd say, don't cry. (laughs) Don't cry. Because she knew of the relationship that was about to start. Yeah. And she knew how happy she was to meet her blood relatives that looked like her that she never knew before. Right. And, you know, so in that scenario, and especially like then, if, if you're telling someone, don't cry <laughs> when their <laughs> family just died. Right. I'm sure the crowd that was with her was like, yeah. Why are you? Of course, we're supposed to cry. This is what we're supposed to do. Exactly. Um, but Jesus knew what was about to happen. Yeah. And the fact that he had so much compassion for her, I think that, you know, he saw something and then he did something about it. Mm-hmm. And so much in our society today, people see a problem, mm-hmm. but then they just, go the other way because they don't care. Right. And so I think that a way that we can show that compassion is when we see something, we need to do something about it. Right. Let me ask you this along those lines. We're going off script a little bit. There are some, you're absolutely, there are some people like, they don't care. They just keep going. But there's some people that they're almost frozen in indecision because they're not sure what to do. So how do you walk that path of going, you're heartbroken, but you're not really sure how to respond to a situation yeah. because it's maybe it's foreign to you or maybe because it's just something that's um, it's just so massive. Yeah. Well, I think that the more you respond to something or the more you experience something, the mm-hmm. easier it is to do it the next time. Yeah. So like if you encounter that and you're like, look, and you go to someone who you trust, like a pastor or a friend or your husband or your wife, and you're like, look, I saw this today and I really didn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. but I knew that something needed to be done. Mm-hmm. Like how would I go about helping this? Or, or is there already somebody doing something about right. it? You know, if it's, if it's a societal problem or a, you know, a America problem and you just see these patterns emerge and you you know, find out if someone's already doing something about it and right. then get in on that. Yeah. You know, definitely. So that's, and that's, Super solid advice. I want to encourage you guys. Like, if you got a burden about something, ask. Like, who's already doing it? We have a big thing here at the Healing Place where there was a season where we were trying to do a lot of things, and then Pastor was like, "You know what? We can't do a lot of things, but there's a lot of people that do it well. So let's support those, and then let's find out what we do well." But ask. Like, see, go to your pastor. Like Sarah said, you know, hey, you know, this is my burden. Where can I serve? How can I do that? Let them help you find mentors who can help you to do that. My wife and I, we had to do that several years ago with some stuff. We were burning about some stuff. And we're like, you know what? Let's do some research. Let's look, see who's doing something. And if they weren't doing it, we were going to step in and do it. Yeah, uh, and I also think another thing is like, obviously Jesus was in tune with his father. Because it's Jesus. It's Jesus. <laughs> but I feel like the more that we're in tune with God, then no matter our insecurities, he can lead us. Yeah in that situation. Absolutely. And so I think that that everyday relationship and prayer life with God and, and knowing that the Holy spirit is inside of you and leading you Mm -hmm. that, that gives you confidence. Absolutely. 100%. Good stuff. All right. Let's continue on verse 14. Then he came and touched in the open coffin and set, and those who carried him stood still. And he said, young man, I say to you, arise. I'm going to pause right there. This has got to be the most awkward moment 
They were carrying this coffin. It's an open casket. There's a dead body. And they're like, Jesus is like, hey, <laughs> arise. And they're going, he's been dead for days. We checked. <laughs> <All right>. He smells. <laughs> Verse 15. So he who was dead sat up, began to speak, and he presented uh, him to his mother. And Jesus' actions would have, they had to be dumbfounding to the people in the moment when he first walked up and he goes, hey, get up. Like they had to really be looking at Jesus going, are you dumb? Like this is a dead kid. I can picture someone like in the background just like, yeah. Just touch the coffee. <laughs> you know, like, it, what is he thinking? Exactly. Because the thing is, like, this is, like, so huge. Like, touching the coffin would have made Jesus ritually unclean. Like, to touch it, he would have been ostracized as a, as a leader from the word go. But then he did something beyond that. And the point is, he speaks to a dead person. And we see this miracle take place. And it's miraculous. It's special. Sometimes God calls us to do something that seems ridiculous yeah. and sometimes he calls us to do stuff that's just super uncomfortable i mean i had to be uncomfortable walking up to a dead body going <laughs> right i'm not telling you guys to go crash funerals okay uh but anyways how do you work through the process of a making sure that you uh that what you feel like god is saying uh is what he's saying and how do you confidently do what he says to do um I feel like, once again, like, the more that you respond to what the Holy Spirit's telling you, Mm -hmm. the easier it is to do it the next time. Yeah. Also, the more you deny the Holy Spirit, Mm. the easier it is to deny them. That's true. Um, But making sure that I feel like what God is telling me is actually what he's saying is, you know, just to stay humble Mm -hmm. about it. And I feel like, your heart's in the right place if you have that question, is that really you, God? Because mm-hmm. you don't want to mess something up, right? Right. Um, I'm sorry, I just had a musical moment in my brain. <laughs> but <laughs> anyways, <laughs> in a musical, there's a song that goes, are you there, God? <laughs> anyways, but um, I think if you have that question, it's a good thing. And honestly, if what you know you feel like God is telling you to do is not contrary to Scripture, mm-hmm then it's probably God. Yeah. And if it's not going to hurt someone or cause that person harm, then it's probably God. Yeah. And so, like, asking that question, like, if I do this, maybe I might be scared and it might embarrass me. Right. But is it going to help this person? Right. And if that answer is yes, then you might as well just do it. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, if they refuse what you're saying, then that's (laughs) up to them. Yeah. But if what you're saying helps them or would help them if they accepted what you're saying, then it's probably God. Absolutely. Because it's not going to be the devil telling you to do something <laughs> that helps somebody else. Right. 100%. Now, again, this is all, over the last several weeks, we've talked about, with Clint, we talked about how uh, the way we approach people, it's important. Just because it's the the right thing to say doesn't mean we have the right to say it any way we want to. We have to do it in the right way. And then, yeah. and then with Jaren, we talked about having this foundation, this rock, and when we have that rock of foundation of, of Jesus, then we develop the relationship. And that's what we talked about with Molly last week was like, we can have this boldness to ask for prayer with a humbleness because we develop a relationship with him, which leads us to what you're talking about just now is that's why we can go to God. We can go, man, I, I have experience of hearing from the Lord because I have a relationship with him. And now he's asked me to step out in something that's a little scary. Well, all right. Walking in humbly. Uh, we, we teach, when we talk to people here about, flowing in the spirit and giving words to people. We're always very careful. We say, look, don't be like, the Lord says this. You better know the Lord said, <laughs> but be humble. Hey, like, I really feel like the Lord's saying this. Let's walk this out together. Let's pray about this. And like you said, if it's going to help them, man, rock it out. It yeah. can be intimidating because nobody likes being told no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ask my toddler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, He's in a stage. <laughs> but the more we do walk that out, the more we do it gracefully, peace the more that we have the confidence to do that Mm -hmm. so good stuff all right let's continue on verse 16 then fear came upon all and they glorified god saying a great prophet has risen up among us and god has visited his people and the report of him about him went throughout all judea and the surrounding region so 
once again, Luke records that the people responded to this miraculous moment, uh, um, this miraculous uh, work of Jesus with praise. Uh, again, in, this is an uh, interesting thing being recorded because it's not just praise of, to G, about Jesus, but it's all glorifying God. It's all going up to the Lord. Uh, there's a correlation between giving praise in the word of Jesus spreading, going out um, throughout the entirety of Luke's gospel. And so my question for you is, how do I put this? Let me just read my sheet that I have this here. This doesn't necessarily mean that people broke out in the singing song and dance. Like they're not dancing. It's not a musical. I wish. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I just pictured that <laughs> you live in yeah, your very you own musical. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not a musical. It's not happening like that. And that's not necessarily a worship story. It's not like Jesus has done something. He was like, hey, I got a guitar. Let's do this. It's not just, that's not happening. How do we practically praise God in our daily lives so that um, the word about him can continue to spread? Because there's a correlation between us praising God and word getting out about who Jesus is. So how do you, as um, not just as a, a worship leader, because that's what you are, but as a just a woman of God who loves Jesus, how do you practically continue to praise God and so the word can get spread? Um, I think that, uh, especially like in this context, mm -hmm. whenever they say praising God and the word spread, I think that it's just they were spreading the testimony mm -hmm. of what happened. Right. And like saying, yo, because praise a lot of times is just giving God credit. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I praise God because he is my counselor, because he has counseled me. Mm -hmm. I praise God because he's holy and I've witnessed his holiness. Right. You know, I've felt his presence in the holy of holies of my prayer closet, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so it's just being a witness mm -hmm. about that praise. Like, like if I was telling you something that I struggle with and then I said, you know, but today I read this. And it really, the Holy Spirit touched my heart. And I know that God spoke to me through this. And now I can get through this. Mm -hmm. Then that would tell you that God can help you right. get through whatever you're struggling with by reading your word. Exactly. And that is giving credit, saying, I didn't figure it out myself. Right. The Holy Spirit, I've read the scripture 20 times <laughs> in my life. Right. But today... The Holy Spirit spoke to me. Right. And he showed me something that can solve this problem. Right. And if you're doing that in regular conversations mm. that you're having, then that is giving praise and spreading the word. Yeah. Because something that is missing in our society is conversations about God. Mm -hmm. There's conversations about everything else. Mm-hmm. But conversations about God. Mm -hmm. For some reason, we've made God very private. Mm -hmm. Which some things are private between you and God. Right. But God is not private. Right. God is for everyone. Right. I mean, God made the earth so beautiful mm -hmm. to show people his glory. Right. So why wouldn't we then show people his glory because of stuff that he's done in us? Exactly. Um, I mean, very creation speaks, so why would we be silent? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's in the Bible. Why would, why are you, you're letting the rocks cry out? Right. Like, why aren't you crying out? So I think that, you know, <laughs> yeah, song and dance is worship, <laughs> but that's not everyday life. Right. And praising God, like I said, is just giving God credit right. for the things that are good in your life right. or the miracles that you've witnessed. Right. Because if I see someone raise up out of a coffin <laughs> and Jesus take their hand and lead them back to their mother. Right. Like I can picture the guy getting up, Jesus helping him out of the coffin and just leading him to his mother. Right. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Why wouldn't you tell people about that? Exactly. And be like, look, this guy legit was dead. I smelled him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's up. And now he's alive because... Jesus healed him. Right. And so because of that, you know, they were telling all these things and saying, it could only be God. It right. could only be God. It yeah. could only be God. Because yeah. a mere man couldn't do yeah. that. I think it's like you said something that I think really hit home was the fact that it was a 
we have to make it a part of our normal conversation talking yeah. about God. It, a lot of people, they have this mindset that it, it's, it's weird to talk about God. I maybe mean, I think some of it's just that we're out of practice mm. or they're not used to having that with people in their lives. Uh, we did a, a big conversation several weeks back about parents sitting down at the table, talking with their kids and, and not, doesn't have to be weird. It's like, we're going to do a Bible study children, but like, just, Hey, let's talk about the Lord. What's the Lord yeah. done in your life? How's mm-hmm. things going? And we don't have to have a three-point sermon every time we talk about Jesus. We don't have to take an offering plate. Don't have to do any of that stuff. We're just talking about, man, I was dealing with this day, and I was reading the scripture, and it really encouraged me and challenged me. Or, man, I was in church yesterday, and pastor was talking about this, and it challenged me in this way. Yeah. And just it'd be a natural part of who we are. And the, like you said earlier, the more we do that, the more natural it flows. And our actions have to line up with it. Absolutely. Because here, I'm a teacher in mm-hmm. the school system. Mm-hmm. So I can't just. Yeah, you can't just vocalize things. But because of my actions and how I treat my students, mm-hmm. my students have come to me with questions mm-hmm. about God, about why I believe what I believe. And if they question me, I can answer them. Right. Because I'm not going to lie to them. Right. Like, y'all want me to lie to my <laughs> No. <laughs> Nobody, y'all don't want me to lie. So I answer them honestly. Right. and And that is the conversation exactly you know yeah that they trust me enough Mm -hmm. and know that i respect them Mm -hmm. enough to be able to ask me those questions and i guarantee you that some of them do not believe in god right and have a real hate for the church right but yet they see me and they ask me questions and i think that you know seeing those actions can also be a real testimony of jesus sure Absolutely. And and once again, back to the care thing. Mm-hmm. Showing that you really care about someone is literally like the first foot in the door. Yeah. Because especially with teenagers, <laughs> they'll slam that door on you real quick. Oh, yeah. If they don't think they care, that you care about them. They'll be like, I don't care nope. about you either. And it's it's heartbreaking. I think the more I read the scriptures, the more I would say the life of Jesus, so many of the biggest events took place, they started with compassion a root of compa- having compassion on somebody's situation or, you know, something just that, well, just situation in life. And when we have that compassion, like you said, it opens the doors for questions, for uh, opportunities and moments. And again, the more we do that, the more those things open up, uh, which, um, I mean, it leads back to the conversation about track that we were talking about earlier. I mean, that entire camp setup is just a one big compassion moment. For these kids, there are rules that you have to follow on track. It's not just like come to Bible camp, kids. It's not like one of those situations, <laughs> but like it's like you guys have some very strict rules you have to follow because there is some stuff that you have to work with the government agencies. But you're when the kids arrive at that campground, like they are surrounded in a bubble of just compassion. Yeah, where your leaders are going, I'm here. Yep, just to love you. I'll never forget. There was this one kid years ago, and uh, we'll end up with this for here in a second. But he. Uh, he uh, <laughs> he was sitting there and he was looking at some of the adults. He goes, "How much they pay you guys to be here?" And they're like, "We're not paid. Like we're just here to love you." And it messed his head up <laughs> because only adults who ever there took care of him were getting paid. Yeah. And the idea of somebody just loving him messed him up for a second. Yep. And if people get that we just love them. We can have moments like what we see here where people glorify God, not us, glorify God, and the word spreads out about how good his God, our God is. Yeah. So, uh, Sarah, what is your final big takeaway from this passage? Um, I think it just comes back to caring. Yeah. And not getting stuck in your routine because Jesus could have just gone about his way wherever <laughs> he was going. Right. Right? He could have just gone about his way. I'm sure he was going to do something somewhere. Mm-hmm. But yet he stopped and had compassion on this mother. Yeah. I mean, it was really kind of the mother that he had compassion on, mm-hmm. not just the dead guy. I mean, yeah, he had compassion <laughs> on the dead guy not to be dead. Right. <laughs> but it was the mother because she was all alone. Yeah. She was grieving and he brought hope. It's good stuff. Guys, want to hear from you. How does this encourage you? How does it challenge you? Reach out to us, MediaHub at thbstreetport.com. Don't forget to check out the Facebook page and the YouTube. And hey, don't forget, if you'd like to help support Track, help to finance what's going on, go to thbstreetport.com, click on the giving page, and look for Track Report. Until next time, have a great week. <laughs>